welcome to Owen TV News. I'm Cheryl Coonan. And I'm Megan Peters. The holiday season was officially ushered in during the first weekend of December with several major events here in the Orient area. Santa Claus was a busy guy appearing at the Holly Jolly Folly, the lighted parade, and Orient Township's Cookies with Claws. Things kicked off on Friday night, December 5th, with the Holly Jolly Folly. This is the eighth year in a row that Galling Buick GMC has hosted the event, which acts as a fundraiser for the Orient Area Lighted Parade. The event experienced its largest turnout ever, with 400 people enjoying food and music. Ticket sales, as well as silent and live auctions and generous donations from the public and area businesses not only raised funds for the parade, but went toward the Mark Turpin Scholarship Fund. John Cooper, General Manager at Galling Buick GMC, told us that the parade has become an annual holiday tradition that all residents look forward to. Well, I think the parade is, is like uh, Dragon on the Lake, it's like the fireworks, it's like the Jubilee. It's all a part of community and coming together, uh, doing some things. And, and the parade, I think for me, is really special because it is a nighttime lighted parade. And tomorrow night is a special night. We'll probably have 80 to 90 entrants in the parade. Um, I've announced it for several years and I can tell you that it's a pretty pretty thrilling thing and, and being around other towns in the Midwest, they don't put on a parade like we do. So I think it's a sense of community coming together. Um, Lake Orion's a great place. Orion Township is really growing and it, I think it's reflected in this weekend and what's going on here, both here and tomorrow night at the parade. Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. Awful good to have you here today. This is one of my favorite times of the year to come down here and to celebrate the Holly Jolly Folly. Get ready for the big parade tomorrow. So I hope everybody comes, or if you see this a little bit later, I hope you enjoyed it. Well, Merry Christmas to you. We'll see you soon. 24 hours later, Lake Orion residents lined the streets of the village to enjoy the Orion Lighted Parade. The tradition began 19 years ago, and each year the parade gets longer and the crowds grow larger. In 1994, Lake Orion held its last daytime Christmas parade. With only 20 entries and a sparse turnout, organizers were looking to make changes to generate more enthusiasm. One year later, the first nighttime parade was held and it was a tremendous success with participation doubling that year to 40 entries and larger crowds. 19 years later, the Orion Lighted Parade has become a phenomenon. Now organized by the Orion Area Parade Group, the number of entries has swelled to over 60, including floats, bands, community groups, and dignitaries. The parade started at the Blanche Sims Elementary School and traveled down Florence Avenue in the village. This year's theme was Frozen in Lake Orion and was led by Lake Orion Police Chief Jerry Narsh in the department's 1941 Ford. The Grand Marshal was longtime Lake Orion resident Sandy Shepard who rode in Neil Porter's 1956 Meteor Convertible. Shepard was named 2014 Citizen of the Year by the Orion Area Parade Group for her work with the Lions Club, Oxford Orion Fish, and the DDA. A stage was set up at the intersection of Front Street and Broadway where announcers John Cooper and Rockin' Ronnie provide commentary as the parade made a right turn on Broadway. Of course, Santa Claus ushered in the holiday season as he waved to the crowds at the rear of the parade. After passing through the downtown area, the parade came to an end at the Eamon Center, which was open to the public for the first time in years. It was there where we caught up with parade organizers. I've been in the community 15 years. It's the biggest and best parade I've ever seen. I can't thank my committee and all the volunteers and the, the village police and everybody else that helped us out. They made it what it is. You know, it's not a one-person job, it's an everybody job. Last night was the biggest holly jolly we ever had. When I went up and down Broadway and I saw people five, six, seven deep, it was amazing, very touching, very touching for myself and the committee to see something like that. But I always come away with the same feeling. That's just a warm heart and just a happy time. This is amazing. When you look around, um, I gotta say, I've been driving, uh, I'm, I'm gonna be not gonna admit how many parades I've been in, but I've been in quite a few in Lake Orion, and I have to say that definitely the 2014 parade is the largest, both in entries and the amount of people in Lake Orion that came out to welcome and see the parade. It was amazing. There were thousands of people lining the street from the beginning of the parade route on Florence Street all the way to the end up here at Broadway and to the uh, uh, close to being renovated warming center. It's a uh, it's a beautiful day. It was a chilly but nice night outside, a clear night, and a wonderful parade. The warmth from the uh, parade goers and the cheers were amazing. 
The four-person group known as Legacy LO has purchased the historic building with plans to renovate it for residential use. They decided to quickly spruce up the gymnasium where parade participants and residents were invited to warm up with Jets Pizza and hot cocoa. The stage was decorated and children were able to visit with Santa and Mrs. Claus. There's so much excitement behind this building and there's so much curiosity that we thought it was really important to let the uh, let the people in and see it and get it cleaned up and to see uh, the direction that we're headed and that's a, a positive redevelopment for this building and breathing some more life into it. Working with the people from Legacy of Lake Orion and the enthusiasm that they had, I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait to have it because now we have a real central ending place. We used to use the senior center. That was sort of tough, you know. Uh, this is more, everybody knows the, the Eamon Center, the old high school. So I think this is a great thing. And like Chuck Saputo said, this is where it all began. So let's, you know, have our parade and end it, end it where it began. Well, you know, this is a gem and the history here is amazing. Everyone in Lake Orion wants to see our history preserved. So our hats off, including my Santa hat, to the Legacy Group for what they're trying to do here. And we hope to work with them uh, for another wonderful location here in Lake Orion. You can watch the parade in its entirety right here on ONTV. You can view the program guide by visiting orionontv.org. Click on Public, then Program Guide to see the daily scrolling guide. The parade is also available to view on demand on YouTube. Just search for 2014 Orion Lighted Holiday Parade. In addition to the parade in the Holly Jolly Folly, another annual holiday tradition took place during the same weekend. Orion Township Community Programs wrapped up a busy year with a special event geared towards children. On Saturday, December 6th, children were invited to spend time enjoying cookies with claws. More than 85 kids pre-registered, with more families walking in on the day of the event. A wide variety of activities created found memories for everyone in attendance. We invite kids and their families to come out and we have um, cookie decorating. We've got a couple of different holiday themed crafts. The kids all get to make their own bag of reindeer food, which they sprinkle on the lawn on Christmas Eve and it helps to guide the reindeer to their house. And then we also, the big attraction is we have Santa Claus here and all of the kids get to sit on his lap and have their picture taken. We have Walgreens here and they provide a four by six print to all the families. And we also have our sponsor um, Goddard School here and they have one of the uh, holiday crafts that the kids get to, to get to make. Merry Christmas! Good to see you guys! Chris Kringle himself made a grand entrance to the delight of the kids making holiday crafts. The children were treated to a reading Twas the Night Before Christmas, and Santa also fielded questions and talked about life at the North Pole. Afterwards, kids frosted and decorated cookies before heading into another room to share their wish list with Santa and pose for a photo opportunity. I am hoping that this is um, a program or an event that the kids get to come to with their family. We have a lot of repeat kids each year and it's great because they get to go back through and look at their pictures and see how they've grown and they like to compare Santas and make sure that we do still have the real Santa at this event. Director Lisa Sokol told us it was a fun way to end a busy year full of events at the Orient Center. We were really busy. We have two big events that we do, Barn Days and the Big Rig Gig that are held out at Friendship Park, and we usually have about five to 800 people at those events. The highlight this year was Beaumont flew a helicopter onto our site for the Big Rig Gig this year. Uh, we also had our Boo Bash, which is celebrated, and Cookies with the Claws here at the building, and the focus group for that is young children, and so it's always a fun event for the kids to come and explore and enjoy having having fun at our building. The staff at the Orient Center is already hard at work planning events for 2015. To keep up to date, like their community program's Facebook page or visit their website at orienttownship.org. The Orient Art Center is currently undergoing major changes with the surprising and sudden exit of director Lauren Dinowith and board president Ron Harper in September. For a moment, a longtime holiday tradition was in jeopardy of getting canceled, but existing staff and board members felt it was important that the holiday market go on as planned. On Wednesday, December 10th, art lovers were invited to attend the grand opening of the Orient Art Center's holiday market. Paintings, pottery, and jewelry created by local artists were available to those looking for unique and one-of-a-kind holiday gifts for family and friends. Now in its 14th year, the artist market is open to the public for 12 days, ending on Sunday, December 21st, and acts as a fundraiser for the Orient Art Center. 
not only does the art center benefit, the artist benefits as well. So um, what happens is the artist brings in their artwork, they sell it here, and then a portion goes to the art center to provide funding for classes, for our facilities, our staff, and to put on festivals like Dragon on the Lake Art Festival and the Dragon Boat Races and then the gala that we bring in in March. That's coming up very shortly. And then we also have um, um, the farmer's market that we've been producing for this past year as well. And this is a really big one too, even though it's an it's a intimate venue that we have. And it's, it produces a lot just by, as you can see with a lot of people here, interaction and bringing community back with art for us. The Holiday Market is located at 424 South Broadway Street in the southern portion of the building that also houses Diamond Dave's Jewelers. Owner Dave Sherman donates the space to the Art Center, which is also used for portrait and pottery classes throughout the year. His generosity has allowed the Holiday Market to become an annual tradition that Lake Orion's art community looks forward to every year. I hope so. I've been, I've been Lake Orion for about 10 years now. I, I want to say maybe 12. And I would, I gotta be honest to tell you, I've seen more and more growth for, for art and art in our lives. And with art growing, our foundation grows. And the more our foundation grows, we can actually do more things for our community. Again, the Holiday Market is open daily from noon to 6 p.m. until December 21st. For more information, visit orionartcenter.org. For most of us, the holiday season is a joyous occasion to spend time with family and friends and to watch the little ones open gifts on Christmas morning. But many families right here in the Orion area struggle to make ends meet and often are forced to go without the things that many take for granted this time of the year. Recently, a very special group of people came together to make sure that many area children have a Christmas to remember. ONTV's Joe Johnson has the story. On Tuesday, December 9th, Lake Orion police officers were joined by military personnel and FBI agents at this Target store on Brown Road for the 9th annual Shop with a Hero event. Area children were given a $150 gift card and paired up with a hero. Wish lists were created over pizza, and then each pair went on a shopping spree in the store. 120 children took part, which is a record for this event. And at Christmas time every year, Joe, it's very, very difficult for families uh, that are struggling to make bills, be able to take the kids shopping. So every year we made a promise to the community that if people will donate, we will take every child that we identify that has a need in a family and take them shopping. Uh, it came about nine years ago, and it was a local Lake Orion resident who was severely ill, and um, he wasn't sure if he was going to survive his illness, and he called me, and he handed me $2,000 in cash, and he said simply, I want you to find children who, without this money, would not experience the magic of Christmas morning, and make their Christmas morning happen. So with that mission, uh, I came back and I brought it to the other officers and staff, and we said, how can we make this grow? Uh, my staff dug into their pockets, uh, the community heard about it and started digging into their pockets. I think that first year we took around 15 children and every year it seems to double um, and uh, it's just an amazing program. And the beautiful miracle to the story is this man got better and he, his health improved but yet every year for nine years he comes in and matches that donation. The organization Sister Souls partnered with law enforcement to make the event happen. They even created a giving table where children were able to use play money to purchase books and gifts for other members of the family. And it was the first time Target hosted the event after several years at the Meyer store in Oxford. We had a wonderful run at Myers, but Target stepped up. Uh, we had 120 children and they opened their doors and they said, we're going to accommodate you. Now that's, that's risky. They've never had an operation this big. And uh, we can't thank Target enough. The staff, the management has been amazing. They pro provided discounts to the children and the families. Uh, a lot of the food and snacks uh, was donated by Target. And uh, they're a tremendous store and we encourage people to come down and, and see what it's all about and uh, reward them for their kindness. They told us about it, but I didn't expect it to be this big. Um, and just seeing the kids, you know, it's just amazing the, what they've done and all, all the little tables that are set up. I didn't expect any of that, and it's just really happy why, to do it here. Why do you think it's important to, to open your doors to these, these children? Because it's important that they see that we're supporting the community, that, you know, especially where we live, you know, um, the people like to see that we're supporting them here and 
Um, I, I think it's good for the kids to see this and the interaction, and I think it's a good relationship. In Auburn Hills, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ONTV News. Thanks, Joe. While that event was taking place at Target, the Orion Township Fire Department joined forces with the Sheriff's Office and other law enforcement agencies at the Meyer store in Oxford. Those agencies combined to serve over 70 children at that location. We are going to take a quick break. When we return, we will have a special report from Katie Shimatero about a recent bone marrow drive for a longtime local resident. You are watching ONTV News. Stay tuned. I'm Joanne Van Tassel, appearing on behalf of the Lake Orion Lions Club, seeking your assistance in helping us feed the needy during the Christmas holidays. Last year, thanks to your generosity and that of your neighbors, we were able to provide food baskets and gifts to over 250 families, including 70 seniors here in the Orion area. This year we have donation boxes that are set out at various locations as shown on the screen. The type of things we are looking for, soup, canned goods, boxes of pasta, mac and cheese. Whatever you can afford, we would appreciate and you can put it in our donation boxes. Welcome back to ONTV News. I'm Megan Peters. And I'm Cheryl Coonan. On Thursday, December 11th, the community gathered together at the Clarkston Community Education Building for a bone marrow drive to try and find a potential donor for a longtime resident. Katie Shimatiro has more. I'm here at a bone marrow drive where a longtime Lake Orion resident is looking to find a match that could potentially save her life. And becoming a match could be as simple as taking a cheek swab. Linda Hamilton and her husband Dave have been Lake Orion residents for nearly 40 years. Linda has been employed by the Clarkston School District for 25 years and Dave has been a volunteer Lake Orion firefighter for over 35 years. They raised their family right here in Lake Orion and now they're asking for your support. Linda was diagnosed with leukemia last September and is in need of a stem cell transplant. Her daughter Carrie Jolly organized today's bone marrow drive to bring awareness to the community with the hopes of finding donor matches. As a family, we're relying on a stranger to be my mom's donor, so we're hoping that doing this today, we'll find a donor for somebody else that's waiting. And finding a donor match is the miracle cancer patients like Linda need. The hope is for her and other patients that that donor will be identified, they'll go through the transplant process, and hopefully their leukemias will go into remission. Becoming a potential donor is easy. You simply fill out a consent form and take a cheek swab, which adds your DNA to the donor registry. If you are a found match, you will be asked to donate in one of two ways. It'll either be a stem cell donation, which is similar to platelet or plasma donation. It's the most common donation type. The less common donation type is the marrow. It's not as invasive as most people think. It's outpatient and you're under anesthesia. Um, it's a small incision on the lower part of your back. So small they don't even stitch it up. Most people are back to the regular activities within a few days. Linda is currently receiving chemotherapy, but a stem cell transplant is her greatest chance of reaching remission. I just did my third round of chemo and um, I will, uh, and it happens that I have to go back to, to stay in like a semi-remission because chemo don't, won't keep you in remission. So that's why I need a donor to get my, my, my savior, my life, my life savior. <laughs> Linda is in the fight of her life and drives like this finds many donors and save many lives every year. People know to go to be an organ donor. They know to give blood. They don't, a lot of them don't know about bone marrow uh, donation. And that's important. And I guess it doesn't really hit home till it touches your life. If you were unable to attend today's drive, it's not too late to make a difference. Log on to bethematch.org and see how you can become a donor. From Clarkston, I'm Katie Shimatero, ONTV News. The spirit of giving this time of year is felt by many around Orion. 
On Saturday, December 6th, one church took the spirit just a bit further. Christ the Redeemer Catholic Church parishioners and friends gathered to celebrate the spirit of St. Nicholas with their St. Nicholas Day project. This event covers more than just a food and toy drive for those in need. It also gives individuals a chance to reach out beyond the borders of Orient to make a difference. Parishioners traveled to local retirement homes to sing carols to the residents, worked with blight busters in the city of Detroit, and repaired shelters in Pontiac. Christ the Redeemer was buzzing early December 6 as donated items were sorted, wrapped, and delivered to Oxford Orient Fish Food Pantry in the Lighthouse of Oakland County. Close to 100 people took part in this annual day of giving. Unfortunately, the need for donations does not go away when the holidays end. If you'd like to learn how you can help those in need, visit lighthouseoakland.org. Their easy-to-navigate website will guide you through the donation process. If you'd like to donate food to the Oxford Orient Fish Food Pantry, you can visit their website at oxfordorientfish.org or call 248-628-3933. Cash donations can also be made easily through PayPal right on their site. ONTV's annual food drive benefiting fish is also quickly approaching. This live television food drive will be held Saturday, February 7th, beginning at 10 a.m. right here on ONTV Public Access Channel 10. This food drive works to fill the pantry shelves depleted from the holidays. If you'd like to help ONTV battle hunger in the Orient area, give us a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orientontv.org for more information. The Orient Area Chamber of Commerce has been honoring the Business Person of the Year since 2009. The first recipient of the award was John Cooper of Golling Buick GMC. Since then, names like Kathy Klein, Neil Porter, Larry Buss, and Joe Zimmer have been recognized. Recently, the Chamber added a new name to the list. On Thursday, December 4th, Orion Area Chamber members and staff gathered at Kings Court Castle for an awards luncheon. Staff, board members, and ambassadors were recognized, and several new awards were handed out for the first time. The Community Beautification or Preservation Award was given to Don Ginhart, owner of 51 North Brewery in downtown Lake Orion. Andrea Rank, owner of Crates Coffee House on M24, was named Entrepreneur of the Year. Christian Mills, owner of Mills Real Estate Ventures, was handed the Economic Impact Award. The Youth Impact Award went to Julia Dalrymple, DACA Club Advisor and Teacher at Lake Orion High School. And named 2014's Business Person of the Year was Roberto Vecchi, General Manager at Buffalo Wild Wings on M24. Vecchi is also on the Chamber's Board of Directors. Roberto, since he came to be the General Manager at Buffalo Wild Wings, has been such an amazing, integral part of our community. He jumped right in with both feet and got involved. He donates wings everywhere he goes. Um, you can't stop him. You'll tell him not to donate food. You don't need it, and he brings it anyway. Um, plus, he is just a very caring and intelligent person. Um, I've gotten to work with him this past year on our board of directors, and he is amazing with his ability to think strategically um, and the vision that he has, has been so helpful for the Chamber. Lake Orange, it's, it's a very special community for me. Uh, for Buffalo Wild Wings, I've had the chance to work in several of their restaurants and be a part of several of their communities, but none have reached out like what Lake Orion did. I mean, there's a standing joke that I love dragons, and I didn't find out until it was a Lake Orion dragons until about two weeks after I got here. People always joke, that's the reason why you're involved. No, it's not. <laughs> I'm involved because I truly do love the community of Lake Orion. Um, it's a great place, it's in, in, I want to be more than a business. I want to be an active member of the community. So when people see not just me, but Buffalo Wild Wings for years to come, they'll say, you know what, they're here to make our lives better, not just for us to go and eat, they're here to be part of us. That's what I want to do. 2014 was a busy year for the Chamber, with staff getting settled in at a new location while planning and organizing successful events like the Community Business Expo. We asked Director Elena Campbell to reflect on the past year. 2014 has been pretty amazing. Um, we have grown again this year pretty quickly. Um, our new memberships are definitely up. We're having a hard time keeping pace with the growth, which is exciting and a good thing. Our board worked really hard to develop a five-year strategic plan, which was very important to the Chamber. That's what sets our path for the future and gives us the goals to work towards to benefit our businesses here in the community. To get involved with the efforts of the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce, visit their website at orionareachamber.com or give them a call at 248-693-6300.
A large project to expand a major road in Oakland County is now in its infancy stages and is due to be completed by 2018. The Oakland County Road Commission has announced Baldwin Road will be expanding from two to four lanes between Morgan and Walden Road. Supervisor Chris Barnett says this project has been in the works for nearly 15 years and is a very beneficial project for Oakland County. We get about 30,000 vehicles a day on Baldwin Road and it is just grossly undersized and for that traffic volume. The project is scheduled for two phases. The expansion between Morgan and Gregory Road will take place in 2017 and the expansion between Gregory and Walden Road in 2018. Baldwin Road will also be receiving five roundabouts. A roundabout moves about 20, I think no, just north of 20 percent more traffic than a traditional intersection. So people should see not only with the increase in um, capacity of the lanes, but also with just the, the, the flow should be a lot better. But Baldwin Road is not the only road getting an upgrade. Lapeer Road will not be expanding, but it will be receiving some major traffic flow improvements by the year 2016. Every intersection will be redesigned to increase traffic flow in between Harmon Road and Golden Gate Road. So for the next three years, we're going to have construction projects, which is exciting and uh, stressful in the meantime. So hopefully people will be patient and realize that in the long term, it's going to be good for our community. Beginning as early as spring 2015, you may no longer have a choice in which waste hauler you use. The Orion Township Board is looking to establish a new ordinance to consolidate waste removal to a single hauler, and it has become a hot-button issue for many local residents. There are currently 92 trucks licensed between a handful of companies operating in Lake Orion. Switching to a single hauler may limit traffic congestion and road deterioration, but Supervisor Chris Barnett says those are only a few of the many benefits. When you have 92 trucks and you have uh, daylight savings time when it's dark at 8 in the morning and students are walking a half mile to the front of their neighborhood to get picked up. Uh, you have a lot of truck traffic and a lot of garbage trucks and um, I will get at least 10 emails or calls a week from a, a, mom, a frustrated mom during the winter saying my kids walk into school and the roads haven't been plowed yet and we have these garbage trucks flying through. Um, so the safety is an issue. Um, the uh, wear and tear on the roads you know there's no doubt that the roads are poor in our community and not just our community everywhere there's no funding to fix the roads especially the subdivision roads so if we can cut down on the number of trucks we think that will be make a big impact at least help the roads last longer some people are concerned about aesthetics just the look of having garbage out when you have seven different garbage companies they pick up on different days there's some neighborhoods that literally have garbage on the curb every day of the week and then the last um, thing is cost. Most communities when they go this route, they people save money. It's just proven. It's economies of scale. If you can take 92 trucks and instead have 10 and pick up the trash at every house, you, there's just a way to save money. There are some residents who agree with the new ordinance, but many feel taking away their option to choose is not the answer. On Monday, December 1st, residents packed the boardroom in the hopes of eliminating any further push for the ordinance. While many board officials agreed that the proposed ordinance still needed work, they voted 4-3 to three to accept the first reading of the ordinance and continue discussion at the following board meeting. Many board officials admit they would like to see drastic modifications to the ordinance before they will pass it. I've been trying to compile all the information that I've received from members of the public uh, on ways that maybe we could address some of their concerns. Um, I still am of the belief that uh, there is an issue that we can help with. Uh, maybe it's not to the extent that we initially proposed, but there might be a way that we can do things to um, consolidate the number of trucks that are in our community. The next board meeting to discuss the consolidated trash issue is Monday, January 5th at 7 p.m. All residents are welcome to attend the meeting and add any additional feedback. We now turn our attention to local sports. Here's Kevin McCormick with the weekly sports roundup. Welcome to the Weekly Sports Roundup. I'm Kevin McCormick. We begin today with a look at the Lake Orion High School varsity hockey team as they went up against perennial powerhouse the Howell Highlanders on Thursday, December 4th. After a tough road stand which saw the Dragons go 0-1-3, they were hoping to turn things around in front of their home crowd. The Highlanders looked to spoil the Dragons home opener, entering the match sitting at 2-2. Two two. The Dragons got off to a hot start, scoring in the first minute of play. Number 16, Ryan Sitlowski, pass to Andrew DeFall behind the net, who quickly passed it back, allowing Sitlowski to slip one past the netminder in the bottom right corner. Later in the first period, Sitlowski scored his second goal of the game, this time firing a slap shot into the top left corner of the net, 
from just a few feet out. The Dragons would get a third goal in the first period. Number 19, Bridger Stevenson put in a rebound off a shot by who else? Ryan Sitlowski. The Dragons took a three to nothing lead in the first intermission. The Dragons weren't done laying it on. They would score four more goals in the second period. The first, a shorthanded goal by Jake Chaffee right off the faceoff. Connor Mester scored two in the second and Bridger Stevenson got another to make it two on the night. In the third period, the Dragons took their foot off the gas, allowing Howell to put three in the net. Final score, Lake Orient seven, Howell three. The Dragons got their first win of the young season and improved to one, one and three. Howell slipped to two and three. You can catch replays of this game right here on ONTV at Comcast Channel 10 or UVerse Channel 99. Over to the hardwood now for the start of the boys' varsity basketball season. The Dragons were taking on their crosstown rival, the Oxford Wildcats, in their season opener. The Dragons come into the season young and inexperienced while the Wildcats look to defend their OAA blue title from a season ago. Despite their youth, the Dragons held tough to start the game. Lake Orion's Martin L. Malik had a big first quarter, scoring 10 points, keeping the game tight for the Dragons. At the end of the first half, Lake Orion only trailed by three, 26 to 23. The Dragons tied it up at 27 apiece to start the second half, but their inexperience got the best of them, allowing Oxford to go on a 17 to 2 run. Lake Orion quickly got into foul trouble. Oxford attempted eight free throws in the third quarter and 16 total in the second half, converting on eight of them. The Wildcats proved to be too much for the Dragons, taking the victory 61 to 45. Leading scorers for the Dragons, El Malik with 15 points and senior Joe Turnbull with 10. You can watch replays of this game on our YouTube channel. Head on over to orionontv.org and click on the YouTube link at the top of the homepage. That's it for the weekly sports roundup. We'll see you again after the new year. Back to Megan and Cheryl at the news desk. That's it for this edition of ONTV News. On behalf of the entire crew, I'm Megan Peters. And I'm Cheryl Coonan. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on ONTV News.